Today we're talking about HIV. When I was growing up in the 90s, we heard about it a lot, but nowadays, not so much. People think it's disappeared or that we shouldn't be concerned, but I'm here to tell you that's not the case. Young ones, come and sit down, we need to talk. We're gonna talk about the AIDS crisis, what happened and why it matters now. Before we begin, we post death and dying related videos every Friday, so if that sounds like your kind of thing, consider subscribing to the channel. Now let's talk HIV. So let's start with the basics. HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus. Basically, it's a virus that targets your immune system, especially a type of white blood cell called the CD4 or T cells. Those cells are like the managers of your body's defense. When HIV attacks them, your immune system slowly gets weaker. If HIV is left untreated, it can progress to AIDS, which stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. That's when the immune system is so damaged that people get really serious infections and cancers that a healthy body would usually be able to fight off. But here's the important part. Today, with proper treatment, HIV does not lead to AIDS. People on medication can live long, healthy lives just like everyone else. Where did HIV come from? HIV didn't just pop up out of nowhere in the 80s. In fact, HIV didn't even start with humans. The main type called HIV-1 originally came from chimpanzees in Central Africa, which gives me another reason not to like those little buggers. Chimps carry a similar virus called SIV, simian immunodeficiency virus. At some point, probably in the early 1900s, hunters came in contact with affected chimp blood and the virus crossed over. There's also HIV-2, which is less common and came from a different sort of monkey. HIV-2 spreads less easily and has mostly stayed in West Africa. The first confirmed human with HIV goes back to 1959 in what is now the Democratic Republic of Congo. From there, it spread slowly at first, but much faster as cities grew and people traveled more. The AIDS crisis of the 1980s. Fast forward to the 1980s. In the United States, doctors started noticing many previously healthy young gay men were showing up with rare illnesses, unusual cancers, and types of pneumonia normally only appearing in very sick people. They didn't know why, and the media, being the incredibly unhelpful thing that it is, labeled it the gay plague, which as you can imagine, did nothing but cause fear and stigma. By 1983, scientists had identified HIV as the cause of AIDS, but at the time, there was no cure and no real treatment. People were dying in huge numbers. In the US, over 100,000 died of AIDS during the 80s. New York City was hit the hardest. In 1981, there were 165 AIDS cases in New York City. Eight years later, there was over 117,000 cases, with 19,494 dead. The stigma was enormous and so publicized that it continues today. People living with HIV were often discriminated against in jobs, housing, and even healthcare. But communities fought back. Activist groups like ACT UP pushed governments and pharmaceutical companies to speed up research and drug approvals. By 1987, the first drug, AZT, was approved. It slowed the virus a bit, but came with nasty side effects and it didn't work well long term but it showed that treatment was possible. The big breakthrough came in the mid 90s with what's called combination therapy. Instead of one drug, doctors started using three drugs together and suddenly people's health improved dramatically. HIV went from being seen as a death sentence to a chronic but manageable condition. In wealthy countries, death rates dropped fast, but in poorer countries, especially across Africa and Asia, access to medication was still limited. Millions continued to die. That's why global programs like the Global Fund and PEPFAR were created in the 2000s to get treatment to the people who needed it the most. But yeah, Trump cut those initiatives, so we'll see how that goes. HIV today. So where are we now? According to the World Health Organization, about 40 million people are living with HIV around the world. Around three quarters of them are on treatment, which is a massive achievement. Deaths have dropped by up to 70% since the mid-2000s. In 2024, around 630,000 people died from AIDS-related illnesses, which is a huge number, but nothing close to what it was before. Most people living with HIV today are in sub-Saharan Africa. Women and girls are hit the hardest, often because of inequality and lack of access to healthcare. In countries like Australia and the UK, US, most people on treatment live long, healthy lives. Treatment and prevention. The treatment today is called antiretroviral therapy or ART. 
For most people, it is one pill a day with few side effects, which is great because for a time there, some people needed to take dozens of different tablets a day. This treatment keeps the virus under control so the immune system can stay strong. And here's the game changer. When someone's viral load is undetectable, they cannot pass on HIV through sex. This is known as U equals U, undetectable equals untransmittable. On the prevention side, we've got PrEP, a daily pill that HIV negative people can take to avoid infection. This is often taken by long-term HIV negative partners of those who are HIV positive. There's also PEP, which is a short course of medication taken after possible exposure, but it has to be started within 72 hours. As a side note, if you suffer a sexual assault, it is vital that you get a hold of these meds. I know you probably don't want to go to the hospital for various reasons, but those along with the morning after pill are vital to get into your system as soon as possible. There is no cure for HIV yet and no vaccine, but research is ongoing. A few rare cases of people being cured after complex stem cell treatments shows it is possible, but not practical on a large scale yet. Condoms are effective, testing is critical, and harm reduction services like clean needles save lives. So let's clean up a few myths. If you're enjoying this video and learning something, please show us some love and click the like and subscribe buttons. And if you really like it, perhaps consider sharing it with others because it is helpful to get the information out there. How HIV spreads and how it doesn't. You can get infected with HIV through unprotected vaginal or anal sex with someone who is HIV positive and isn't on infective treatment. Sharing needles or syringes from mother to child during pregnancy, childbirth or breastfeeding if there's no treatment. Very rarely through blood transfusions in places without proper screening. You cannot get HIV from kissing, hugging or shaking hands with a HIV positive person. Sharing food, drinks, torts or showers with a HIV positive person. Mosquitoes or other insects or just being near someone with HIV. And HIV is not a gay disease nor is it something that just people in Africa can get. Anyone of any colour, age or identity can get it. And let me give you a story of someone I know personally who has allowed me to tell their story. So this Aussie woman in her early 20s in the early 2000s was attending uni. She had a new boyfriend, a very lovely guy it seemed. A couple of weeks after dating they decided to take things to the next step and have sex. He of course had an aversion to condoms, I don't like how they feel. She being young and inexperienced said oh that's fine and they had sex. And being a new couple had sex a number of more times over the next few months. Again, a seemingly great couple. Now, they were at university, so they were on campus a lot and a lot of people know a lot of people. So one day he's at the university tab having a few drinks, enough that he starts saying things that he wished he probably didn't. Because on the table over is a classmate of this young woman who knows that they're dating. Not friends, but they're well acquainted. In a nutshell, she overhears someone say, have you told your girlfriend that you're positive? And he says, nah, I didn't want to ruin the mood. Now, this classmate overhearing this could have chosen to ignore the information or believe she misheard it, but luckily she didn't. And she went back to this woman who she knew was this guy's girlfriend saying, I don't know if I have all the facts, but this is what I heard and I found it concerning. So this woman went and got tested and yeah, she's HIV positive. So firstly, let that be a warning. Don't blindly trust people. But secondly, it's also good to know that nowadays she is on treatment. Her viral load is undetectable. She works full time in corporate finance. She's married and obviously her husband knows she's positive. And they have a son who is perfectly healthy. It's not a death sentence that it once was as long as you maintain your treatment. However, there is one topic that we haven't discussed and you're not going to be happy about it. But if I need to know, so do you. Bug chasers. For those of you who have watched the channel for a while, you may know that in my previous career, I worked in private practice as a psychosexual therapist. So a psych that deals with sexual issues and the area that I specialized in was fetish and kink. Now, these things in and of themselves do not require therapy. There is nothing wrong with having these desires and in most cases acting on them, unless it is impeding one or more main functions of your life. And with that, I present to you bug chasing. These individuals eroticize HIV through engaging in online sexual fantasies of being infected with HIV and some intentionally seek out infection through sexual activity. These individuals, the ones who are actively seeking it out, absolutely require therapy. 
While it is very rare, a lot like necrophilia, rarely spoken about openly, there is quite a bit of research going on about it and there has been since the 80s when they first started noticing it. And in case you're wondering why, there are four main theories. Firstly, fear. They are so scared of infection that it has altered their sexual practices by choosing to remain celibate, only having one partner, or wearing protection. They feel that being infected will empower them and they won't have to worry about it anymore. Two, they find erotic because it's the ultimate taboo. Third, they believe that they will be part of a shared community with other HIV positive individuals. And lastly, some see it as a type of political activism against social norms such as heteronormativity. So there you go. So here's the takeaway. HIV is real, but it's not the same story as it was in the 80s. With today's treatment, people with HIV can live long, healthy lives. HIV doesn't spread through casual contact. It is way harder to contract than COVID, for example. I've knowingly been in the same room with many people that are HIV positive and I'm still negative. But you can still be infected in today's world, here in Australia and other countries like it. We've come a long way, but the fight is not over until everyone everywhere has access to treatment. And with that, go talk death.